What did they say? <clears throat> Nothing serious. I lost another one of my nine lives. Oh, this hurts. Got many left? I'm in the red. <sighs> you haven't woken up yet? Nope. We're gonna be here a while. Vulpine, seven letters. Scheming? Hmm. You think that's the same thing? No, no, no. Sounds a bit off to me. Wait, I know. Vulpine, seven letters. Cunning. What are you looking for? Nothing. Will he live? He'll live. So what have you found out? Randall Lee. Apparently in love with our penitentiary system, judging by the frequency of his visits. Theft, assault, extortion. You know, minor things of the sort. Any partners? Always works alone. He's never ratted out his employers, provided they exist. Did you find anything? Is this our man? Do you have proof? Looks like we know who tore his pants following Mary Purnell up to the rooftop. His pants have a tear in them. I found a piece of that same fabric at the gym, on the stairs that lead to the rooftop where we found the second body. Makes sense, but how many pairs of ripped pants are walking around New York City? <laughs> I don't call that evidence. The guy who broke into the gym in Dunn's place has a thing for sardines. Did you smell his breath? Right, because there's only one sardine fanatic on this side of the Hudson. I need something more.
I saw footprints from those very same shoes next to both the gym murders. Unless you're telling me that shoe was a limited edition, I'm gonna need something else. One of the thugs that attacked me the other night had a snout just like his. I'm sorry, but you can't incriminate someone based solely on species. What else you got? What more do you need? I've given you four pieces of evidence. None of which are conclusive. He tried to throw me off the rooftop. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. He's our man. No, he's not our man. Make up your mind. He's just a puppet. Someone is pulling his strings. Hmm. Could it be Yale? He's hiding something for sure, but I don't think he did it. By the way, was he discharged? His room is empty. They let him out yesterday. He's in police custody now. You can tell he's an athlete. Made quite the comeback. Anyone else would have taken ten times as long. Anyway, he better be fine. You know they've ordered me to escort him to Madison Square Garden on the day of the fight. That's the first I hear of it. Quick, what do you want? Good cop or bad cop? I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Good thing someone took out the trash. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Lee. I assume you're aware that you're about to be accused of murder, and that thanks to the witness testimonies of Mr. Blacksad and Miss Dunn, your future is not looking too good. Go to hell, you dog. If I choked you with a pillow, nobody would know. You should already be dead. Blackhead, stay out of this. Remember who's the cop here. Maybe we can offer you a deal. We know someone hired you to kill Joe Dunn and Mary Purnell. What do you have to say? I'll call your bluff. You ain't got nothing. Your friend, the Hell Horse, doesn't seem to feel that way. Although I'm afraid he won't be talking anymore. Shut up, or I'll kick you out. If you tell us who hired you, we'll help you. What can you offer me? How much is your life worth to you? Don't pay attention to him, Mr. Lee. We aren't vigilantes. But we can significantly reduce your sentence. <coughs> That's a start. But it's not good enough. I want in on the witness protection program. New city, new job, new identity. And a clean police record. That's the only way I'll talk. Meanwhile, I want police protection 24-7. I'm afraid that... Whoa! Watch out! <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Smirnov's wound wasn't as bad as Randall's. Unfortunately, the police found nothing on the nearby rooftops. Our best shot at finding the killer was gone, so I went back to my previous lead.
It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates, so my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing. Hello, Smirnoff residence. You're Let's dead! No, I got you with my lasso! Can you quiet down, kids? Ben got killed for stirring the hornet's nest. And you confessed your crime! Kids, please. He'd been investigating athletes for months, including Helen Moore and Al Stone, among others. Mm. Dunn's notes aren't all that clear, and I'm not sure what he was after. Mm. But I'd say we're facing a widespread corruption case. Well, if you're right some dangerous evidence. Bring it here ASAP. Sure, but there's something important that I need to finish first. I wanted to follow a certain lead on my own before Smirnov had the chance to see anything. According to his notebook, Dunn had seen Craig Spano at Sam's diner just four days before his death. Scram, you son of a bitch! Beat it or what? Well, I can't make up my fucking mind. Either call the cops or beat your ass. Which would you prefer? It might have been easier to slap the information out of him but I decided to trust in a universal truth. Everyone is guilty of something. You don't know who I am, right? Don't know and don't care. Come on, spit it out. I'm John H. Blackmore from the Consumer Protection Office. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> there are some real freaks around here, so I have to be firm, you know? Have you eaten? Dinner's on the house. Only if you don't treat me like the rest of your clients. You have far too many complaints. Will you cooperate? Sure, go ahead. Your call. Always at your disposal, Inspector. Ask away. Fear turned him soft and made him talk. Sure enough, Don had been there a few days back with a chimpanzee who matched Spano's description. Apparently, the guy still lived with his father. Ben said he couldn't stay there a day more. For the time being, he was moving to his place. Wait a minute here. What does consumer protection have to do with that chimp? The chimp died of food poisoning. But wait! He... he didn't even eat! Which is even worse. Dunn had taken Spano to his place. I wanted to believe that when Randall Lee broke into the apartment, Spano fled to his former address. But where could that be?
I got you. If the living have rich and poor neighborhoods, so do the dead. In the mid-19th century, Greenwood became the resting place to the city's most distinguished citizens. Thinkers, scientists, writers, inventors, artists, businessmen, politicians, police officers, thieves, pimps, and murderers. lie the bodies of the soulless minds that raised New York from the ground up. Now you know where to go to become somebody in the Big Apple.